So these are just a few of the varieties that I'm growing in my garden right now. And you can see why I love clematis so much. This is on a previous garden tour of mine back in March and April, I believe. So you can see how beautiful they are. And we're gonna be discussing a few things you can do to promote more blooms in the summer and fall. Thank you guys for joining me. I'm always so grateful to have you watching. And if you're new to my channel, I'm thankful that you're here. And if you're returning, thank you for coming back and appreciate you guys' support. Obviously, I'm a fool for clematis, so I hope that after watching this video, you will also fall in love with this plant. Hey guys, good morning, and thank you for joining me today in my garden. My name is Dawn, and I garden in Texas Zone 8B. Um, so I just wanted to just give a quick shout out to one of my subscribers for this adorable little bee feeder and the most encouraging note um, gardening in Texas can be challenging it can be discouraging probably just not in Texas but anywhere um, between the molds the weather and the bugs and the spider mites and everything else um, it is easy to give up and part of the reason that I did this YouTube channel was um, not for the money because really there's no money in it guys just FYI <laughs> in case you were wondering um, but just to keep me motivated and keep me going, when we had um, some extreme weather years ago, the freeze killed about 95% of my garden. And gardening is what I do, it's what I love. It keeps me going. And I was so discouraged and I wanted to give up, but I just knew that I couldn't. Um, and so I felt that not only me, but a lot of gardeners go through this often, almost many times a year they want to give up as much joy as i find in gardening i also find it to be completely discouraging at times so um you know i don't know just a sweet little thoughtful gesture like this uh it, it does keep you going and just some of the thoughtful words and messages from some of my subscribers they really mean so much to me um i don't know so i just want to say a special thank you and i'm going to find a special place for this so what you do is you fill the little flowers up with water and then you find a spot in your garden and the bees and um, other little pollinators will come and get water when they need it. Is that so sweet? And then just a lovely, lovely note. So anyways, um, so if you guys have watched some of my previous videos, you know that clematis is one of my favorite flowers in my garden. I have so many varieties all over my yard. So most of the varieties that I grow in my zone, which is zone 8B, um, they're in groups one and two. Group one is a spring bloomer. Group two is a spring summer rebloomer. But our summers get so hot that the summer blooms are often pretty sparse. But a lot of mine will come back and flush again in the uh, late summer, early fall. Uh, the summers get too hot for group three, which are summer and fall bloomers. So mainly today we'll be talking about deadheading groups one and two. However, all of the groups would benefit from everything I'm gonna be showing you today. So with clematis, you can get your blooms in the spring and you can stop there. But I typically like to make sure that they come back and bloom for me in the fall. And to do that, you're gonna have to deadhead them. You don't well, I say have to, but you don't have to. As you know, clematis has three varieties, one, two, three. Um, it's real important to pay attention to what varieties you have. Um, my goal this year is to label all of my clematis. All right, so I got these, and as you can see, they're still in the box, right? This is why it's a garden goal. <laughs> so I got these cute little labels. And I know there's so many different types of labels out there, but um, I this is just what I'm starting with. And I was putting the plant tags in the, in the ground, but the sun fades them, so it just doesn't work. But um, you get a little permanent marker and a cute little black tab, and you just slide it on and put it at the base of your plant. So again, the goal is to put the clematis variety on here as well as what group, it, what pruning group it's in. So that all I have to do is look at that quick label at the base of the plant. So those are important because that will determine how you're going to prune your clematis. Okay, so today so we're just going to deadhead and I will be removing some of the dead branches. And what that will do is 
encourage your clematis if it does come back in the fall it will have more energy to put into the blooms so if you leave it, the flowers on the plant you're going to get a cute little circular um, seed head okay so if your energy is being put into the seed then it won't have the energy to put into the roots and then into the foliage and into the flowers that it may rebloom for you hope that makes sense um, clematis are not as intimidating as um, a lot of people make them out to be they're actually very easy to grow and i think a lot of people give up on them just because of the time that it takes so my clematis most of the ones in my yard are over five years old uh, they take at least three years to get the roots established. You know, there's that old saying with perennials, right? Um, is it sleep, creep, leap? Okay, so clematis is the same. Uh, a lot of times when I plant my clematis, I plant it deep and I keep cutting off the growth because I'm wanting my clematis to establish extreme and beautiful, strong roots and I'm not concerned about getting flowers that first and maybe even that second year. So when that third year comes, your plant should just flourish. And then after that, it should continue to flourish and it becomes so easy. Okay, so don't give up on the clematis. Persistence is key and tenacity. Just hang in there and keep going. So today, that is what we're gonna be doing. We're just going, I'm gonna, one of my clematis in my back, one of my favorites, which is Dr. Rupel. I'm going to be deadheading it and I will show you guys exactly what I do. After I deadhead it, I do add some, fer some type of fertilizer. Um, so I'll show you what we're gonna do. All right guys, so this is the cute seed head that I'm talking about. And look how cute they are. They're so tempting to just leave on the plant because they do add a lot of interest. So if you like this and you wanna just keep these on for summer interest you sh you can you can absolutely do that this is not a necessity deadheading a clematis is not a necessity um, i do it because i love to be outside i love to be in my garden and i love to do garden work it's just what i do so i do like to come out and deadhead my clematis i find i get better flowers in the fall i always have clorox wipes with me and i have my snippers you want to make sure these are sharp and you want to make sure they're clean okay so anytime you're deadheading or pruning your plants. You wanna make sure you have a clean blade. It is so easy to transmit. That was loud. <laughs> it's so easy to transmit disease and problems with these blades. So keep that in mind, always have them. And as far as fertilizer goes, I typically use rose tone on my clematis on a, uh, for a slow term, slow term. You guys know I have word finding problems. It's very obvious, but slow release fertilizer. I also called it just long-term fertilizer just because that's exactly what it is. Um, but uh, I don't have any flower tone today. So, you know, I use swarm castings a lot and that's what we're gonna be doing after we deadhead. So what you're gonna do is you find your cute little flower head, just like that. And you're going to trim it off at the base if I can get a good angle to show you guys. You're gonna trim it off right at the node right there. You see that? Can you guys get, let's make sure we can get a good view here. Come on, move out of the way. You're gonna trim just like that. This one actually had three, three seed heads, three. So I'm going to clip all those off, okay? See that? Just like that. So while I'm at it, I'm gonna remove any dead branching and this is gonna go for any variety. This is gonna go for A, B, or C. You're gonna do this for all of yours. All right, so again, let's do this little seed head here. Okay, so I'm gonna do that throughout. All right, so how to identify dead branches. That is the key here. What I like to do is find the top of the dead branch and then follow it down to where it connects to live leaves. So you can see here, it connects to this node here. Now your plant should have pretty much growthed out. So anything dead at this part is most likely not gonna create new growth. So I feel pretty confident that you can go in and snip off at this node. So just like this, you're gonna snip. The nodes are where the new growth is gonna come from anyways. They're not gonna just come from a dead branch. 
and that will encourage new growth at this spot. So I'm gonna pick on this intersection right here just because I think it's a perfect example of what we're looking for with dead. So you can see a lot of live growth coming out, but you can also see there's some growth that looks like it's not doing anything. So that is the growth you just wanna, well, I call it growth, but it's actually just dead. So pull it off, flip it off, whatever you need to do. So you can see that um, this particular area just shoots off to the back here and there's no growth on it. So I'm going to assume that this is dead and I'm taking it off. Again, just removing any debris that just looks like it's adding messy appeal to your beautiful clematis. Take it off. All right, so let's follow this up, this node that does look like it's alive. So as you follow it up all the way to the top, you can see that it ends with a dead section here at the top. So you may get some growth out of the last two leaf nodes that you see here or even this set of leaf nodes here. So you have options at this point where you can clip off the dead there at the first set of leaves, at the second set of leaves, or you can just clip it all the way back at the node there. At the intersection is where I'm going to go ahead and just give it a clip because I feel like I will get more growth, maybe two or three stems versus this one. So I'm gonna snip. another one okay it starts here you follow it up and then look it ends so there's just a lot of breakage a lot of times with clematis so this is one that I can probably clip right here or I can take it back a node which is what I think I'm gonna do give it a clean clip right here and that will encourage new growth out of here okay just like that all right, so let's just keep going upwards. I like to clean out all the debris from my trellises just so it doesn't look messy. All right, so let's just go through and get these real quick. And then I have a step ladder because I have to get pretty far up there. Mine are super high. This is a six foot fence and they go all the way to the top of this fence. And some of these I'm actually just gonna cut back even further, just again, promote some heavier growth down here because they will continue to grow for you in the summer months and put off a few blooms. So can you see here in my in my tree, they are all up in here and they do look so cute. It's sometimes really hard to take these seed heads off because they are so cute. And with clematis, it's important to train your vines. If you don't train your vine, it'll just grow into each other and just become a big clump, which happens a lot here at the bottom. You can see this is a bunch of vines that have just fallen onto each other and clumped onto each other. So I wanna give these guys some space and room to grow. And so I'm going to make sure that they are trellising upwards instead of downwards. That is, of course, unless you want them downwards but um, typically we want them to grow upwards, right? So, and again, that helps you identify dead growth when you try to separate them like that. And this is, and the way I untangle them is typically what happens is it's just the, the, um, the leaves tend to just kind of attached to the other leaves very easily. So I'll just clip those and it helps to um, unwind the vines a lot easier by doing that. And you're not gonna harm anything by cutting off those leaf nodes. You're not gonna be cutting off anything that might be blooming. This is gonna need um, And this is where the Velcro comes in handy because if you don't Velcro them, they will tend to just fall right back down onto itself. As far as attaching it, I usually love to use this Velcro here. Um, I also have twine, but this is my preferred. So you definitely wanna try to provide a trellis if you can. So I'm just gonna snip a little bit of Velcro. And feed it onto my trellis here. It's 
instead of and we can just loop it over one of these okay and it just kind of gets it off the ground and i have a short out that um, i have rooted plenty of clematises and it's more effective in the spring when you can take a long stem like i just took off of the ground and um, you would clip off the leaves and bury your stem and it'll give you a bunch of baby clematises so that works every spring um, that is how I spread all of these clematis. So um, that's something that you can try and I highly encourage. And that is, again, how I got this beautiful spread of Dr. Repel back here. Um, but let's keep just removing some of this dead. And then we're gonna give this baby a good fertilization. I'll add that link to the short right up top. And when you cut, I just encourage you to just clip, clip, clip in short segments. It, the shorter, the easier it'll be to figure out what is what you're actually cutting and what you're not. I hope that makes sense. Click, click, click. So I do this to my clematis once or twice a year. Typically in spring, I go in and clean it up. And then after the blooming season is over, I go in and clean it up again. And it just helps to keep a healthy, spreading, growing clematis. guys I know it's not feasible for everybody to get on the step ladder but if you can make it to the top you can see a lot of the breakage happens up here just because of the winds and the delicate nature of the um, stems vines not sure what do you call them I don't know but anyways um, it causes a lot of breakage up here to cut off the deadness and also just unwind these and start training them and this is oh no uh oh uh oh and I just want to feed them through my trellis. Again, it's not necessary to do it, but if you have the time to do it, I think you'll reap the rewards. So I am sweating buckets. I don't know if y'all can see it, but it got so hot out here that my camera overheated it all. So that's how hot it is. I had to take a break so that my camera could cool off and then come back. So this is what I'm trying to film here. Okay. I better get back, back down. down before I fall. I don't encourage you to get on a step ladder. That's entirely up to you. It just helps me to get to the top. If you can't get to the top, they will be I'm trying to say is don't hurt yourself trying to trim your clematis. <laughs> Please stay safe. Okay, so now that I have it all deadheaded and cleaned up, I'm going to add a little bit of fertilizer and this will just help to make sure that it has the nutrients that it needs so that if it is a one that comes back and blooms in the fall, it'll give you some strong blooms. Okay, so I just pull the soil away all around the base of the clematis. And again, I have my own intestines and I'm just gonna spread it all around the base here work it in and I do add a bloom booster throughout the season as well two types of bloom boosters this is Fox Farm it's an organic version that I love and then there's also the uh, Miracle Grow bloom booster so anyways um, that is it for now for these clematis and I hope that in the fall these come back and give me a beautiful bloom. I do have a really huge uh, Natchez Pride Myrtle above me. So I also think that I need to go in and trim off some of these limbs so that it's getting enough sun. And let me show you, I'll show you what I'm talking about. I have found the saying to be true that they like their head in the sun and their feet in the shade. So most varieties like sun, especially early morning sun, afternoon sun can be hard for them to tolerate. I have my little baby loppers. I love these things. They're so much easier to use than the big ones. So I'm just gonna get up here and cut off some of these so that they can get more morning sun. All right, make sure my blades are clean. I think what I wanna do is just cut myself. Cut myself. down 
if you can't reach it. Just pull the branch down. Stick the loppers on it to hold it. And that's cut. Alright guys. Final one. That ought to do it. The sun is perfect. Now I need to go through this. Burning, bleeding cut. Some of my favorite varieties are, uh, I think it's Pink Champagne, Nike Warsaw is amazing, um, Dr. Bupel, which is what this one is, and Happy Diana is a new one that I am growing this year and I absolutely love it. Um, let me think. That's all, uh, that's all I can think about right now, but I know I have a few more, but that is my main favorite growing clematises. So if you have some that you love, please share them with me in the comments. I'm always looking for suggestions on new clematis or clematis that are successful in our zone, which is zone AB. I always love adding additional. I feel like I have them all, but I know I only have about, uh, I don't know, a third. No, probably not even that, but I like to think I have tons, but I know I don't. So uh, please let me know which, which ones you like. Uh, this particular clematis gets about six hours of sun daily, uh, morning through early afternoon, and then it gets partial speckled, beautiful um, shade through the evening and um, it's perfection for this clematis. So uh, as always, I hope you guys found this video informative and helpful, and I hope that you give clematis a try. Don't give up on it. Uh, it is a very, very easy plant to grow. Once it's established, there's really not a lot of maintenance. I don't have many problems with bugs or diseases. I know they happen, but um, the only problem that I have had is when we have heavy rains like we have had, and uh, it'll get chlorosis, but that's easy to treat. Um, okay, guys, since I'm accountable to you now, I'm gonna go ahead and get some of these labeled. I'm gonna get the Bees G's, Bees, I'm sorry, Bees Jubilee, the Dr. Rappel, and Nike Warsaw. They're all in group two. Group two is when they bloom on both new and old wood. And they're typically uh, spring bloomers with a few, um, with summer blooms as well. So uh, let's get going here. So, oh, and Happy Diana I'm gonna do as well. That's Happy Diana. So I did test one of these when I got them in earlier this spring. I put one out on my Vancouver Sea Breeze. It's the one that I showed the video in the sample. And it so far has maintained itself considering this crazy weather that we've gotten. So um, I would recommend them. I know there's a lot to choose from out there, but um, I'll put a link to my Amazon storefront in case you were interested. All right, now I've got four down. And I've already got one in the garden, so let's go put them in place. I think I have about four or five more varieties to label, but this is a great start. So that is it. You guys have a great day. Thanks for joining me, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye. Guys, let's go find a cute place for this where it might be like to hang out.